Hello and welcome everyone to FMC. I am Jeremy. That is SP3. It is Tuesday, April 16th. and We're here to now talk about wrestling. Every time we've been on screen lately, it's been nothing but wrestling since we didn't do a show last week. And then you've been the, the co-host for In the Weeds since what, last Friday. So SP3 is here all week on In the Weeds. So you might, might as well. I, I actually got to pay you for this now. Shit. That's hey awesome. man, I was just you just give me the opportunity to do my Larry Sabisco. I was like, that's a Sabisco right yeah, there. That, I do yeah, that. No one, no one ever, no one ever mentions it because oh, I, yeah. I used to love that the Sabisco did. It. I do it all the time. But uh, yes, you give me multiple opportunities to do it here on Fightful Overbooked. I am now um, also known as Negro Domics because I predicted Sheamus's old theme song yesterday on In the Weeds and. Um, Let's see what I can predict with the NBA playoffs and X-Men 97 today. X-Men 97 NBA playoff talk today. We've also got the challenge all stars to talk about share Delaware. We, we, we got to do our it. draft. That's, That's right. Well, I mean, I guess so. I guess we could do a draft. There's already been people. <laughs> if, gone it's it's going to be without Janelle. And <laughs> yeah. Yes, we've, uh, there's already been people who've gone home on Challenge All Star, so we'll, we'll see when Cher Delaware joins us. What we're going I to mean, do? I mean, to be fair though, none of us wanted to pick Tyree. Yeah, none, yeah. none of us. But oh my god, I'm, I'm sorry to like probably break the the schedule of what you wanted to talk about here. But my lord, I don't think there has ever been a bigger loser in Challenge history than Tyree because this dude had that elimination. He was up like he blew he blew a three one lead in this elimination. <laughs> he was up three one, and then Steve started hitting threes like he's Golden State. Like it was insane. It was insane. It's, it's unreal. That was one of the most fascinating eliminations to watch because of everybody else's reaction to when Steve just started. <laughs> coming out of the water repeatedly Tyree and then the, the worst part was the the last ball and he, he gives him the Sabisco he goes, oh yeah he yeah he taunted him I was like damn that's cold that's cold right there should we just invite share Delaware and just start with uh and start with challenge talk hold on let me let me send this to our pal Shar Delaware and see it yeah let's let, we'll send it to her see when she shows up until then yeah. we'll we could we could talk we could talk a little bit with the uh NBA because we got the play in tonight Western Conference how play you feeling in. how you feeling about the play in so I had talks I'm not only a part of the seven bucks uh text chain I'm also a part of the LeBron James uh J LeBron corporation text chain and Rich Paul made a good point he was like, you don't want to play, you know, risks of having one game for your whole entire season. So if we got to win tonight, we got to win. Begrudgingly, we got to win. If we can win, we got to win. It's loser mentality to be like, let's try to get the eight seed to avoid the difference. Yeah, it is. You're right. It's a loser right. mentality. You're right. And that's not the Lakers. That's not the Lakers. And, you, you know, and number one LeBron fan out there, uh, what's his name? Uh, Nick Wrong. Uh, he also made a good point of probably there's like a 75% chance we're going to have to face the Nuggets anyway. So yeah. the best chance for us to beat the Nuggets is when we are the most healthy, which is in the first round. You also, like, I, I kind of mentioned this yesterday uh, during In the Weeds, but, like, you don't want to play around in a one game scenario yeah. either it's like you could tank lose this game and then it, you're facing the warriors not like you had a whole lot of success since the warriors this season you face the kings not like you have a whole lot of success against the bonus throughout anthony davis's career you don't really want to play around in that scenario of like oh now all of a sudden you're not even in the playoffs just because hey. you tried to avoid the nuggets the only they yeah the, the way that this is becomes a scenario that I don't want it to be is that the Kings win against the Warriors, which I don't think they are. I think that I think that the injuries to Monk and Herder are going to be very crucial for them, and I think Golden State has been playing their best basketball of the season. I think they're going to win, and I'm going to hope I'm going to I'm going to say the Lakers beat the uh, Pelicans. So we have Pelicans and Warriors. That would be 
Wednesday night or Thursday night? Is it one game off and then I mean one day off and then the second play in is on Thursday? I You're think muted. it's Friday. Oh, okay, Friday. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure both I think both the play in the second play in games are Friday night. Okay. Um and then the the playoffs start on Saturday. Saturday. And then but I think the play in teams would play on Sunday. Um, okay. And the other thing, like if you're the that's Lakers, weird. that's weird scheduling, though. Like it should be on Thursday. You should have one day off. It should be on Thursday. Maybe it is on Thursday. Maybe the Western game is on Thursday and the Eastern game is on Friday. Oh, okay, okay. I thought I thought they were gonna do like both the West and the East on the same day. So yeah, if one is on Thursday and one's on Friday, that's fine. I mean, I can I can double check just to to make sure. No, I, I was I was correct. It, they're both both games are on Friday. Yeah. yeah, get two days yeah, off does. after after if you lose. But again, that like the issue with that, and this is why if I'm really either of these teams is all right. Here's our pal Cher Delaware. Oh, I'll pop her on in a second, and we'll talk. She about loves to talk basketball. <laughs> do you want to do you want to talk basketball, Cher? She loves to learn about basketball from us. It's great. It's great. <laughs> so real real quickly, my point on. On this is like if you're the Lakers, like you're already an older team. Talk about my team's age. Why do you want to risk playing that extra game as well? Yeah. And then you get one day off, and then you got to play the Thunder on Sunday after you've played two games this week, one day off, and then you got to travel to OKC to play the youngest team in the league. Like we're gonna have pretty fresh legs for that game. I I wouldn't I wouldn't risk it. If you can beat the Pelicans tonight, you should probably just beat the Pelicans tonight and. Look, the Pelicans in these spots, their history is not great. And we just saw them get destroyed by the Lakers yesterday, two days without ago. AD. So, without AD. He was there for the most of the drubbing. Well, like, I mean, what do you mean? He, 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 he sat out a while. No, he didn't. SP3. No, he didn't. Hey, hey, it was barely. We've been bare. Well, AD's been out of a couple of games to suffer in the last game. But he played, he's gonna he's gonna play he's gonna play well and he's gonna get thirty and SP3, ten SP3, against SP3, New Orleans. SP3, SP3. At, he played thirty three minutes. He didn't sit out at all. He got hurt with like two minutes to go in the fourth quarter. He probably shouldn't have been in the game because they were up so big. See, see, I was trying see to what? mentally. I was trying to mentally put him out of the game early. He should have been out of the game after like twenty minutes. He probably should have been out of the game by that point, but he played 33 minutes. He played the majority of the game. He played great, by the way. He played fantastic in that game. And he should, you know, I assume he's going to play tonight. I think by all accounts, he's going to play tonight. And we'll see. You are muted. I did not mute you. You've muted yourself. Uh, he he always plays well against his old team. So he's going to play well tonight. Yeah, he's a matchup problem for Zion because yep. he can handle Zion physically and then he just backs off of him and dares Zion to shoot. So, all right, let's talk about the challenge. How are you doing, Sherry Delaware? I'm good. How are you guys? We're well. We're well. We missed last week because I decided to actually take time off after WrestleMania week and Sherry Delaware had an appointment anyway. So we, we weren't going to do a show anyway. Well, maybe. But regardless, we're here this week. I've actually caught up on everything. I know that astounds everyone that Shocker. I'm actually caught up. Yes, I know. I know. So we got two episodes of the challenge all stars. Uh, I guess we'll do a draft, but we're going to talk about these two episodes. Yeah, first. we can just if people got eliminated already, we can just not include them. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I was like, none of us wanted to pick Tyree anyway. <laughs> Come on. Who wants to pick Tyree? So it's Challenge All Stars season four. It is an individual season, allegedly, until they decide to team people up because they always like to do that. They always that. tend to switch it up. Yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, we got some big hitters for, for this season. I really love this cast as well. And I like the, uh, I guess, the the elimination, how things are decided. The, the top four people. From the first challenge, got a gold star. Yeah, top four in each category. Uh, well, top men three, women. men and women. Was it top three? Okay. Yeah. Top three, so three men and women. It's three gold stars for okay. men and women each. All right. So they get, they get a gold star. And then the people who compete in the daily elimination can steal the star. Or the person who wins can go down there and try to get a star for somebody else as well. Or themselves. 
Yeah, or themselves. So it is a uh, it's an interesting way to do things. I like it. I like the way they they're going about this. I'm sure it'll lead. You know, we saw it in episode two. We saw Janelle want to go down there. Like, yeah, let me go get a star for myself. Let me. I want to go ahead and get that. And you're gonna see that probably a lot throughout the season. Uh, the the first challenge was basically kind of a puzzle, but more of just an endurance gimmick. Yeah, it was of, it was like doing suicides with a puzzle. Yeah, yeah. And the the top four, I'm trying to find it because my memory is uh, uh, the top three ladies were Cara, Cara Maria, who beat yeah. everybody. That was yeah. impressive as hell. Uh, she beat everybody number one overall. Avery, who impressed the hell out of me, coming in second. And Rachel, which I mean, it's Rachel. Yeah. And the 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 cast is just ridiculous. The women's (laughs) side of this cast may be the greatest women's cast that we've ever seen in the challenge. When you got Rachel, Tina, Veronica, the mean girls back together, you got Cara Maria and Laurel in the same house. Laurel in the same house with Nicole Z, who's one of the most annoying people that I've ever seen on the challenge ever. Um, like the the woman side of this is just completely stacked. That even like you have dark horses like an Avery who who's looking good so far this season. And I I, I just like Avery as a reality kind of TV show person. She was like my favorite person from the Portland cast because everybody on the Portland cast was awful except for her. Um, but yeah, I, I always liked Avery, and I really liked this woman cast. I liked I liked Ayana going into the season. I like Janelle as a favorite, like a Dark Horse favorite for the season. So it was like multiple girls. And of course, Killer Cam's back. And that's always great to see. The men who won the first challenge was Adam, Brad, and Brandon, who got stars. Yeah. For Brad Brandon. was first. Brad Adam was first, was, yeah. Adam was very impressive because of the, the house conversations that they had with him where they were going over. It was like, yeah, how many um challenges have you won? You oh you mean missions? He's like Adam. Adam, <laughs> sir. <laughs> they have not called it missions in two decades. Adam's uh, you know, he's been there for a little while. It's, it's it's been a while for him. He looks so different. I was like, that's Adam. Word. I did not recognize him at first. He looks definitely, so so different. Definitely looks older. My favorite person of the people returning is Flora, because she does not want to be there. She is I'm there for that saying. check. <laughs> I respect it. I respect the hustle. The, yeah, the, the oh, daily challenge was uh was good, and then we got to the house, and so. And what I don't like about, you know, the winners of the daily challenge, yeah, they're safe, but I just feel they should have more power because it's everyone yeah. who doesn't lose and doesn't win, who's in the middle portion, who gets to vote on who goes to the elimination to verse uh, kind of like out of the, the losers of the daily challenge. They get to choose between those people in the middle in the middle section. If you didn't win or lose, you get to choose who's going to go into the elimination, the two people. I yeah, don't like that. I think that the people who won should have some type of vote. Well, your your power by winning is basically deciding if you're going to go down there yourself to get a star. And that's where kind of the power goes in into things of, hey, you influence the middle group of vote for this person, put this person down there. That's sort of your power. Or if you have a star, you have more uh, incentive to try to win to keep your star um but then it could just be stolen if if, if you're not down there anyway um I, i'm with you that like the middle group seems to have sort of the power though because they're the ones voting the people down to to go in to winning just basically it gives you more influence than actual power because it's not like the middle group has to listen to you to put them down there yeah um, with the kind of the losers of the first uh, daily challenge, I was, of course, most surprised by Leroy. Leroy did not uh, play well in that uh, first daily challenge, and he was a part of the losers bracket. I believe it was him, Derek, Kyrie, and Steve. And Tyree's dumbass thought that these people were going to vote for Leroy over him? To go to the elimination? What is wrong with you? Everyone loves Leroy. 
I always no one knows love, you. I always love seeing people that are so far removed from the challenge that they're like, well, I did a challenge with them 15 years ago. One challenge for three <laughs> weeks. So obviously they're not going to vote for me. And it's like, okay, um, no, like that's not... <laughs> That's not how this works. <laughs> hey, they they made the point. They made the point of like it's a lot of relationship based, and there was the point of because you don't know who actually finished last in this, you can't even vote I mean, based on. Let's, let's be real here, though. If y'all were paying attention, Derek was last. That's why yeah. it was funny that Ryan was the one who said, "Oh, we don't know who was last, dude. You know who was last. It was your best friend." You're just saying that because you don't want to vote. Vote for your best friend. And I understand that. But keep it real. Don't like it, it, don't say don't don't make up excuses of oh, we don't know who was last. That's why we can't make it performance based. Yeah. Be like, it's too early. It's the first vote. We are basing it on relationships. Sorry if you don't have a relationship, but that's what we're basing it on. I mean, it is they they did say it was based on relationship and Look, we know who finished last if you if they were paying attention. I don't trust that these people are actually paying attention. Are you kidding me? These are some of the dumbest people in the world. No offense to them, but I don't think they were actually oh, paying attention of how far along people were in the game. Probably just like, oh, you, you ain't first, you're last at this point. If you ain't top three, then you're last. So I don't think they actually did know who was going to, to be close to the last. But it was Steven Tyree who got it vo who got voted in for the even his model challenge. hands yes the model hands for Steve. Model but he's been, he's his his hands have gotten rough so he's been losing yeah. out on hand jobs he hasn't been given a he hasn't been having enough hand not jobs narrating that yeah he's not, he's not had enough hand jobs because his hands look rough and also oh tyree guys he's been he's a personal trainer he does cardio he does weightlifting. He does taekwondo. He does flexibility. Like he's he is so skilled. And as soon as he was saying all of that, I was like, really, <laughs> really? I was like, I didn't even need to see the end of this episode to be like, I don't believe you. You need more people. I will say, I've never been like a Tyree fan, but he his daughter his daughter's middle name is diem after diem and that oh, like nice. melts my heart <laughs> like that's the sweetest thing ever but yeah he sucks <laughs> <laughs> oh he lost this challenge he was up big sp3 and i were talking about a little bit before he came on share but he was up like 11 to to 5 and then all of a sudden steve had it had the strategy of like gathering all the balls into like one little area and then once he realized I thought he waited too long. I was like, dude, he's going to come in there and just steal one of these. He's going to see it at some point, but never did. And then Steve just started putting them in there, putting them in there. And then he finally found the last one. Yes, he he bid Tyria adieu and put that last one in there uh, to, to get the victory. And that was that. So Tyree went home in episode one. Episode two, uh, we got the, the return of the van. The Road Wolves van was back for episode two. And it was they, they got grouped into to teams for this. And the team that amazingly won was Jay, Laurel, Nicole, and Tony. Tony Tom. Good to see him. Tony Tom. Yes. But he it was it was stop, he needs to stop saying that as much as he does. So. Oh, we love Tony it's, Tom. It's, a, it's annoying. It's annoying. <laughs> if other people say Tony Tom, it's fine. But the fact that he's always the one who says Tony Tom. It was it was a puzzle with math and like TJ came on the the radio and like gave out numbers and you had to like do a bunch of math with it and then I love that Jay I, I forget it was, if it was Jay or Tony but like oh yeah Laurel and Nicole worked great together and they're like no we just didn't talk to each other it was like me and Jay worked well and me and Tony worked well together that's what happened we didn't actually talk that's why it worked so well is because we didn't talk at all on and, the thing and then is, they started arguing like i wish more which i'm laurel just makes me mad she just for someone that's supposed to be as smart as she is she is a dumbass but yeah, all these like, people are stupid well, i mean she's she's literally a vet like she yeah. freaking you have a i swear vet. it's like it's like these people might be smart like outside the show and like the real world and stuff they get like they have good jobs and yeah. you know but the moment they come on this show they they leave their brain outside yeah. like yes. she she is 
just awful on there. I'm always just like, girl, I know you got to be smarter than this. And you're coming on here and just making a fool out of yourself. But I do think that that's, if you're, if you're forced to be on a team with each other, I wish more of them would do that. Yeah. Like, they screw themselves over wanting to argue with somebody the entire time and they end up losing. Like, just don't talk to each other. You got other yeah. people on the team together. Just communicate through them. Don't talk to each other. And then you're going to win. Like, yeah. and, and But I didn't like, like Nicole say at all because I think Laurel said like one thing to her because she was doing nothing. She was just standing by the car and uh, it's supposed to be listening for stuff. So she asks her if she can listen for a particular thing. And uh, they had the confessional with her where she was like, oh, you know, Laurel always wants to be in charge. If it was in real life, I would be in charge, but I'll let her take the lead here. Yeah, you should, because that's how you won. You should always let someone else take control because I don't think Nicole's that good at the challenges. I think she's that not. she's athletic, but she's not that good at challenges. She's she's proved herself to not be that good at it over and over again. Like, Nicole, there have been a lot of annoying people on the challenge. Nicole is easily top three yes. of the most annoying people that have ever been on that show. It's the accent, right? It's, it's the no, it's, it's, it, 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 it's the it's the over the top accent mixed with the with the fact that she has no type of self awareness. Like I I went back, I saw clips of no the uh, vendettas, the vendettas reunion when she's up here like talking to Kara, like Kara didn't just win the season. She's like, yeah. oh, you didn't prove anything. Like what? I beat you in the final. You were in the final. You got hurt. Oh, if I didn't get hurt, I would have won. No, you got hurt and you lost. Yeah. Not, we don't know what would have happened if you didn't get hurt. You probably would have got stumped at the final puzzle. Because you no, always do. No self-awareness and no accountability for anything she does. She always blames it on everybody else. And that is one of the things that frustrates me the most. Because, like, you're grown. But, yes, her accent is fake. Because she's a triplet. So she identical triplets. Okay. Her, one of her sisters was on the show, say yes to the dress. And I remember watching it and being like, I recognize this girl from somewhere. Well, it was when Nicole was first on the challenge. So I was like, where, where do I recognize this girl from? Neither of her sisters, both her sisters are straight, but they're both super feminine too. Neither of her sisters have this accent. No one else in her family has this accent and her accent is way toned down on say yes to the dress. Then she gets on here and is with her freaking peanut butter, the most annoying person I've ever met. I'm like, oh my God, she's so obnoxious. And then knowing what I know happened between her and Laurel after this season that Laurel put out all over social media about taking Nicole to a wedding overseas with her and Nicole slept with the bride before the wedding happened and <laughs> like, was there was there as Laurel's date it was Laurel's cousin I believe was there as Laurel's date uh J what was her Jack was that her cousin's name that did yeah the Jack's sister there is Laurel's date, sleeps with the bride. So that doesn't happen. And like Laurel straight called her out on social media about it a couple months ago. And I'm like, and what does Nicole do? Plays the victim and tries to blame Laurel. <laughs> you, <laughs> but, <laughs> you, you made me do that. Like what? <laughs> and I'll never understand all these girls throwing themselves at Nicole either. Like, she people will be like it's her swagger she has none she has <laughs> none and, i mean and apparently she, look, look she look, shows she... herself to be like i said triple h was when he punched down on will osprey you're you're the guy on the corner who hollers at the girl and then gets mad at her that she ignored you and be like oh she was ugly anyway because that's how nicole treats cara because cara was the only one yeah. who seemingly has rejected her Okay, what? she might not have any to, to us, but clearly she's got something that attracts people to her. Because... I think that a lot of it is when they're stuck in this house together, you've only got so She's getting options. brides out here, people who are about to get married. She That ain't in the house. I don't know, because she's not attractive. 
She's annoying. Man, this is all in the eye of the beholder here. I'm not going to <laughs> knock clearly some type of game she does have. She, she when has she's some pulling type of the riz. people. She is. I think it's because she freaking gaslights them. Maybe. I mean, something like, works for her, though. Because it, she never has relationships that well. No, <laughs> no, no. It's all, yeah, it's all it's very always much. always a catastrophe when it's over. Yeah. So yeah. I'm like. And mm-hmm. Laura only got with her in the first place because she wanted to win her from Kara. Yeah. And she's the only girl that Laurel has ever been with. Yeah. And I'm like, maybe expand your horizons. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, let's try something different. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, the, and the fact that th- this person is the person that is the reason why you and Kara weren't friends for years is like the worst part. It's the worst part of it. And that the fact that we all know this is about to happen again. It's about to happen again on this season of of Nicole putting Laurel against Kara again. Well, and that's the thing, too. I was talking about Nicole not taking any accountability. Laurel doesn't either when it comes to her friendship with Kara. Everything is Kara's fault. And, And she also punches down... At Kara, like she will bring up the worst things that have ever happened to her yeah. in like a regular argument. Like they'll be having a disagreement about what to have for dinner, and she's like, Well, you got ab- abused by Abram. Like, what's wrong with you? Are you okay? Yeah. She's and- not a ni- I, I'll be honest, I never thought Laura was a nice person. Like, no. I'm sorry. No. It was, it was, it was from the like one of her first seasons, the cutthroat season with the with her in Easy. And that whole conversation, just the way she mm-hmm. said it and, like, insulted his weight and, like, it was just so flippant. It was like, her, and she was drunk because how I know it was drunk is because I feel like that's how she really felt. That's She shows her yeah. real self when she's drunk. So I, that's bad. I don't know a lot about Laurel's past, but I will say she comes off as someone who grew up very privileged. Yes. And she was a mean girl in school and it's very obvious that she was a mean girl in school, the way that she acts towards the other girls, especially on there. But like someone who was supposed to be a friend at one point with Kara, I mean, there are a lot of people I don't like, and I would never bring up the things that she brings up in arguments with Kara. Like, I mean, every season they get into it and she does it every single time. And a lot of times they don't air it. Because yeah. of the horrible stuff that she says to her. And it's just like, man, like, as she's someone that at that point, why is she still being cast? Like, if other people get booted off the show for doing a lot less than what she's done Actually, to her. Actually, like, like if, 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 if Laurel's still on the season, why isn't Ashley? Because yeah. all, all I heard Ashley do is she called, she called uh, Josh the uh, uh, bad word. And it's not a word I would say on there. It's not a word I think she should have said to him. But no. I'm just saying, it's words. And that's what Laurel always does. She uses her words. She doesn't fight anyone, but she says some really incredibly nasty things. Well, and we've got people on there who have, the when they freaking duct taped Amanda to the chair, and they're still on the show. I'm <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like, I mean, I, I don't know. Like, they, I mean, they're very, we know that they pick and choose who that who they allow on and stuff but like she's just a bully she yeah. and she and she uses her height whenever she starts arguing with somebody and then stands over yeah, them she always to, wants to stay yeah. mm-hmm. i'm like okay andre the giant we got it like yeah and then the whole argument with her and nicole after they won i was like both of y'all look like fucking children Yes. Like it's disgusting. It's like it's like I don't like y'all together because it brings out the worst in both, in both of, of them, and they're like, both already hard to tolerate. Yes, and then it bring, like the thing <laughs> I always come back to that elimination with Ninja, mm-hmm. which we've never seen her like back since. <laughs> but I always come back to that elimination when Ninja got on my last nerve. I couldn't stand Ninja. She was like a little child, like just, she annoyed me. But I I did actually agree with Laurel at first about it. Like, yeah, uh, like, okay, you know, maybe we should just reset and do this over. But then the way that she acted, I was like, 
no, just send her home. It's okay. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I was like, I was like, and and uh, and I didn't like how Laurel was moving. Like, I understand you're like you're mad at Wes because Wes was talking shit, but Wes didn't do anything. You just did some. You like you did it off of or hearsay, and because he had a conversation, you basically screwed over your whole team and started the domino effect of Wes being out, bananas being out, and then you being out back to back to back. Oh God, and I that's why team. That. That's why Team USA lost World of, War of the Worlds, and it's all because of you. I forgot about that. She literally just screwed them. Like, <laughs> yeah, and and then got mad, acted like she didn't do anything when when Kara and Polly basically turned it back on them after they got rid of Wes. They got rid of Bananas and then got rid of her as was deserving because y'all tried to blow challenges and get Polly and Kara out of it once again. No accountability. No accountability. With the second episode, so Janelle wanted to get voted in. She wanted to go down there. And then they were all at the club because they always have a club night. And Ayana said, oh, Janelle wants to face Jasmine. This is what she wants to do. She wants to face Jasmine. And everyone's well, like, you, oh. you got to explain that literally – the first person that we see Janelle say this to is Ayana and Cam in the bedroom. And yeah. like the confessional with Ayana was basically telling us what she was about to do. She was like, oh, you asking me to go down there. You need to give me something back. Like, what is she giving you? What is she, what are you giving her that you deserve something back? She's like, oh, you need to tell me who you want to go down there and everything. If I'm going to give that to you. Like, there was only from what I gathered anyway is three choices it, yeah you, there could only be janelle tina or jasmine it's like it was if janelle wants to pick two of the three it's only one yeah. person you can't vote for yeah right so i guess theoretically you could have just done tina and jasmine and that would have been that but you know like i if yeah if i'm ayana like you were probably gonna lose that vote anyway so she tried to just she made up that jasmine or that Janelle wanted to face Jasmine and then this all got back to Janelle and they're like did you say this no Jan Janelle even was like like if I wanted to call somebody out I'd call somebody out like I'm yeah. I just wanted to go down there I don't care you're gonna get T you're gonna get Tina or Jasmine either way like I don't think it's Janelle was really yeah yeah I don't think and I don't think Janelle was really worried about either of them honestly no. like no offense to Tina. No offense to Jasmine. No, Janelle. she was like either one. She's gonna be. She would. Yeah. Be either one yeah. of them. That's Janelle why she just, said, "Just throw me down." I'm trying to make it easy for all of y'all. Y'all only yeah. have to make one choice. You have to yeah. make between Tina and Jasmine. That's all y'all have to do. She's, I'm making yeah. it easier for the whole entire house. But Ayana was able to to flip that and basically use that. Do the the telephone thing of. Oh, yeah, she wants to face, face Jasmine. And then when it got back to uh, Jasmine and Tina, Tina is basically trying to push Janelle into the into the line of fire to be like, okay, what did you say? What did you say? And Jasmine's like, yo, yo, are you trying to call me out and stuff? And then they realize that it's all it's all Ayana. But yeah, everyone it already started the domino effect. And because Every Tina, Tina was all for it because Tina's like, Oh, it's 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 Janelle and Jas if Janelle wants to race Jasmine, then I'm out of it. And she kept it going. She dragged it out even more because she did not want to go into the elimination. So everyone seemed to agree that like Ayana just talked a lot and talked. I mean, Le Leroy, when he's like, I don't understand none of this. I don't understand anything you just said. Can you please <laughs> clarify? Well, we didn't get to the to the liberation yet because that is an all timer. That is an all timer uh, uh, deliberation. <laughs> But everyone seemed to agree that like Ayana was making it up. And if Janelle really wanted to call somebody out, Janelle would probably just be like, yeah, I want this person. Let's just go ahead yeah. and do that. And said, Janelle was like, yeah, I don't care which one you sit down. I'm going to either way be fine. They do go to the deliberation. Well, Ayana it, talks. It, it's already over by the time we even get to the deliberation. Because of the, like I set it up because of the whole Tina thing. Because when we get back into the house the next day, the next morning before deliberation, Tina goes to, to, to Janelle. Oh, you're not you're not saying everything you said. I think you need to clear the air. And like that broke Janelle. That that was it. That was it. That was the last time because Janelle basically had to defend herself the whole night. 
went to sleep, then wakes up in the morning and still y'all are questioning my integrity. I said what I said, and I said I reconfirmed that what I said. Everybody else said that they were there and they heard the same thing. Why are you still dragging this? Why? Because you don't want to go into elimination. And she put her out there. And that's when Janelle broke down. She was like, I have a family. Like, I don't need all of this. Like, why are you doing I... this? Why are you doing this to me? And she, at that point, she was done. That's when she made her decision that she was leaving. I think there's a lot more to it than yeah. what was shown. Because yeah. I can't there imagine... Is. There is Janelle. Okay, see, I don't. I'm not online. I like. So on YouTube, I will check make stuff. a couple comments here. Um, Janelle says she is never coming back onto the show again. Oh, um, two bad experiences with all that. She got screwed over in the final in season two, and yeah. then this. Um, essentially, Ayana and Tina teamed up against Janelle. Um questioned her blackness which i'm thinking what the hell does tina have to say in that conversation tina's just always got to have i've I've never been a fan of tina anyway because like you're like 50 and you're still a mean girl but like they they upset her greatly um talked about her family questioned her blackness um a lot of things that so um Jimmy has a podcast and she DM'd back and forth with Janelle and Jasmine both. And Jasmine was fully on Janelle's side in all of it and said like, they were awful to her. They like would not leave her alone. And you know, none of it was aired, but like the entire night, just following her around and picking at her and calling her a liar, questioning her integrity, like, claiming that she did not stand up for black people because that's why she wanted Jasmine instead of Tina. And yeah, just a lot of, a lot of things that I cannot blame her for being like, yeah, I'm done. Like this, this shit is not worth it. If you're going to come at me this way. And like, like I said, why the hell is Tina in the middle of all this? Well, because Tina was trying to save her own ass. Yeah, and the thing is, and 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 it seems like that is the reason what happened in deliberation with the votes. Yeah, and the thing is, they should all be smart enough to know that that's what's that's what Tina is doing. It's just trying to save her own ass, and the, like Janelle was throwing herself in. She's saying, "Vote for me. Pick whoever else you want." And I like the fact that that turned into what it turned into is just crazy, basically. But yeah, um, that's the consensus. Is Janelle says she's done. Um, she won't, which they didn't air it. So like nobody would have really known if it wouldn't have been leaked out, but that she's not going in an environment where people are going to question her morals and her integrity that has nothing to do with the game that they're playing. Like they were just trying to get under her skin and upset her. And we talked a little bit about this in the DMs. Like I like Dayana coming into this and she just, I I don't like her now. And like, she's going through some health issues in real life, you know, like hope that everything will be okay for her. But I don't think I can ever <laughs> cheer for her in a game environment again, because you took a game environment and brought real life things into it. And Leroy was involved in the conversation and Leroy's like, no, like this is not okay. You can't, you can't say stuff like this, you know? And I, I saw somebody saying they don't understand why they aired, you know, when Camilla was awful to Leroy, they aired all that. They showed, they showed all that of her. And I mean, we missed, a couple of the words that she said, but obviously they wouldn't have been able to air that anyway. But like they showed her going after him and everything part of it because it lasted longer than it did. But this they just completely cut and just made it look like she was just upset and like, okay, well, I'm done. I'm going to go home. And that's not at all what that stemmed from. It stemmed from something way bigger than that. And like I said, I can't blame her. Like These are not 20 year olds on here. Like these are grown ass people who are taking time away from their families and careers to come do this show. And then you're going to treat her that way. Like, no, I mean, that's, I don't understand. Like I said, I've never been a fan of Tina and that just kind of 
solidified that for me too. I've always been a fan of Tina's, but like that was just horrible. It was just horrible because it was so obvious what she was trying to do. And then with Ayana, I've been a fan of Ayana because of the whole salad promo on Jody. But even if you go back to that, that was a very petty thing to do to eat someone's salad if you know it's their salad. And then this whole this whole thing with uh, Janelle was just the pettiest of the petty. Like it was just a petty move because you don't like her from mm -hmm. issues y'all have from season two, and you wanted to take it out on her, even though she's making it easy for the whole entire house with what she was trying to do you tried to spin it to make her look bad and to uh you know try to try to attack her character and that's not that's and not right. i think it would have been bad enough if it was just an argument between ayana and janelle but tina getting involved in it like what position would i have as a white woman to go question a black woman's blackness right. and like where she stands on things so it's like you need to stay over there. You shouldn't even be in this conversation. It's bad enough that Ayana is doing it to her. But, like, why are you in this at all? And that's, I mean, Jasmine and all of them that spoke about it, which everybody that she spoke to was Black, and they were all like, no, like, that, they kept calling um, Ayana and her, or and her little sidekick is what they were calling Tina, because Tina's just yeah. nyeh, 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 behind her yeah. the whole time, like, it's horrible, horrible. And, and Tina just looked bad this entire second episode because of that. And then she tried to intimidate Avery. And it's like, how are you intimidating anyone? You not, you're not good. You're not gonna win any daily challenges. Well, th this you're is not Tina's, gonna win any eliminations. This is always Tina's game, though. She has to intimidate people because she is not good at this mm -hmm. stuff. Like that's I mean, that look, she's aligned with Rachel. I mean, I know they've been longtime friends and they've always been kind of the, the mean girl click, but Rachel's still a good competitor. Veronica hasn't been a good competitor for years. And for Tina's years. never been a good competitor. So like she has to use the intimidation stuff because she's not an actual good competitor. And that's so that's why she was so going so hard at him because she didn't want to get thrown in. Yeah. Well, she didn't she I guess did get thrown in because she was voted against Chanel, but Chanel left and now we know there's more to the story again i was like why are you leaving off of this i understand they're being jerks and but it seems like most people were on her side mm -hmm. they like nobody really believed ayana outside of tina and it's like just go in and beat them so it was clear there seemed to be something more to it and the other big tell telling point was like if you quit the show tj is going to be like you're a quitter like you're just gonna quit and there was not nothing of TJ being like, you know, mm -hmm. left, she quit, whatever. Like, it was just, you know, this happened. And then, you know, he asked if uh, Laurel or Nicole wanted to come down to try to fight for the, the star. They didn't. So Tina just got the star and took every star. Which I don't understand. Like, why? Why won't you come down and fight yeah. for the star? I mean, it, it is a ri that's a risky. They really I didn't know that they could beat her. It yes, was kind of like a but... puzzle gimmick. Like I think if it was like a physical uh, challenge, Tina, Tina would have beat beat Nicole in a puzzle. Yeah, but Laurel would have one hundred percent beat her. Yeah, yeah. I I don't know. I mean, that's which I guess I was thinking about this as we were talking about it earlier. Those types of challenges are so difficult because it's like okay. Do I want to try to get my star early and then have people gunning for me this entire time to try to steal it? Or do I want to wait and hope that towards the end I get a chance to get a star? Because sometimes that chance doesn't come. They're going to keep you out of an elimination so that you don't get one, you know? So it's like, well, which way do I, I mean, at that, at that point, I would probably just take a, I would tank the daily. Because yeah. if, you, if you're in the losing portion, you have a chance to at least go yeah. to the elimination, so. But I always think like th those are definitely more strategic, like long term challenges when you have to have something to even be able to get there. So yeah, this is like the the red skull, gold skull mm -hmm. on on steroids. And I always like I always prepare that that type of uh, style of, of game for the challenge. Now we can talk about the deliberation because that was the highlight of this episode. <laughs> Go ahead, Jeremy. Ayana, well, Ayana talked for about three hours, and then. <laughs> Leroy was just like, I didn't understand a word you said, hibbity hoobla. 
And then Ayana was about to talk some more. And then Leroy was like, no, I'm done. I'm not listening to this nonsense. No, it's and because what? Ayana said, Ayana said, they are my two friends, Tina and Jasmine. So I will not vote for them. And you know, then yeah. they just do the breakdown of her just going in circles. <laughs> and then at the end of it, after like 45 minutes to an hour, they say, uh, yeah, she, goes, like, she goes, so I will not be voting for anyone today. And I vote for Jasmine and Tina. And yeah. that's, what, that's what broke Leroy. That's what broke Leroy. Leroy was like, wait, what? What did you just say? Like, like wait, wait. He was like, he was like, I got the cameraman out there looking at me, like, make this stop. He broke the fourth wall. I've never seen that on a challenge. He broke the fourth wall and said the cameraman. We're looking at me like, this is outrageous. <laughs> Yeah, Yo, she I was did. like, Leroy's the realest person in the room. He was like, I can't. I can't. I can't, I can't do this. I can't do this. Yeah, she was like, I, I'm not going to say Jasmine's name. My vote is for Jasmine. <laughs> it was very Eddie Murphy fucking up your couch. Like, I didn't, I didn't, fuck, I didn't mess up Eddie Murphy. Yeah, I might, I might have done that. <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, Leroy was over it. He's like, uh, nope. Done with this. Nothing. No, can't do this anymore. Can't do this anymore. And in the end, it didn't matter anyway because Janelle, unfortunately, went home and that's that. All right. Are we going to do a draft? Is that what we're going to do? Sure. Okay. sure. All right. The order of operations is myself, share, and SP3. I never get the two pick, I never get the one pick. And never fails. I always get screwed over. You never get the number one pick. I can't. I don't make up the rules, SP3. I yeah, put okay. them in the randomizer, and this uh -huh. is how it pops out. <laughs> Sounds good. Wow. Are you questioning my integrity? <laughs> is that what you're doing here? No, I'm questioning your whiteness. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone can question that. I was going to say, I'm pretty white. <laughs> You watch basketball. I've seen you eat fried chicken. I'm questioning your whiteness. I love chicken. I, love chicken. <laughs> I, I want. I want to talk about the the Drake and and Kendrick Lamar beef, but no one will have me on their podcast to talk about it. All right, here's here's the order. Here's the list. All right, I have the first pick. I am going Bro, to. Pick. What a coincidence! <laughs> I did. I'm picking Kara. You guys are mean. Oh, Damn God. it! Damn it! Quit bullying me. Bully. You bully. You bullied me. Quit bullying me. All Cher, right. You're up. You're up, Cher. My time. I'm going to pick. Shit. Um, I guess I'll go Laurel. God damn it. See, this is what I need. I needed one or two. All right, SP3. Well, you got three and four. No, oh, <laughs> congrats. Uh, I'll take Rachel. All right, you again, SP3. Uh, let me get Killer Cam. We've picked no men. <laughs> I know. I was like, what are, what are we doing here? Share. Mm. Well, you might as well take Janelle off the list. Well, she's there for now. Same with the. Uh, we'll give her to Tyree. the chat. We'll yeah. give Janelle to the chat. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you get Tyree and the Janelle. Gets Tyree and Janelle. I'll take Brandon. Wow, oh, I didn't I, think Brandon was going to get picked this early. I love I like how Brandon. this broke for me. I'm taking Brad and Leroy. Roy Lee. Roy Lee. That's me. I like how that said, I was so I was hoping to get one Roy of Lee, them. That's me, Leroy. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping oh. to get one and end up getting both of them. Let's go, Tony time. I respect it. SB3. Give me Avery. I like Avery. Mm-hmm. Well, dude. And uh, let me get dark horse pick here he's better now 
because he could drink the damn drink, Jay Mitchell. Uh, okay. Share. Um, Ace. Oh, okay, now we're getting down to not the a whole lot. Gritty. The women just... I don't have we, faith we, in... We, we took all the best ones. I know, I know. But like, I, I got to take a, a shot at one of them just because any numbers, maybe... <laughs> I'm gonna take Adam. I'm gonna have and... like one guy by the end of this night. <sighs> and it's gonna be Jay Mitchell. <laughs> I honestly like I'm I'm more just I almost just feel like rolling with Kara is like my only female and then just ha hoping the odds are in my favor when I mean, it comes yeah, to that's guys. not bad. That might be the best bet. Because the females are there's just... only going to be one winner though. Yeah, I know. That's why I might as well just hope my up my odds for guys because I don't have faith that any of these women are actually going to win. Who are left? Like Nicole, maybe, but not really. Tina ain't winning anything. Veronica ain't winning anything. Ayana, Flora, I don't feel good about any of them. Flora, Flora, Flora. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Steve. Just pick all sure. the all the penises. Why don't you? I told you my strategy. <laughs> Give me Flora. Nah, good for you. Stand up for Flora. We are here for Flora. All right, SP three. I figure she's gonna be more annoying if um. She's all, she's gonna be more annoying if she's not on my team. So Nicole Z. Another one. I can I, I can direct her annoyingness at your two teams. Um, and then what is that? Let me get uh, Grand Uncle Khalifa. Sure. Ooh. Jasmine. She got a lot of friends. Jeremy. Where's the love for Derek and Ryan? <laughs> I'll I'll take Veronica in hopes that Rachel just protects her the whole time. <laughs> hey, Veronica was good in uh, what was it, season two, season three? Season three. It was season three. She like was Road Rules season two, season no, three? No, I'm talking about All-Star season three, oh, okay. sir. <laughs> uh, and then I'll take Ryan. Share. Derek. Because when SP3 came to Challenge Mania with me in Chicago... And I was saying hi to everybody. Derek kept jumping in every picture that I took with people because he was drunk. He didn't realize okay. he doesn't know me. <laughs> SP3 last pick. We'll give. We'll actually give the chat more numbers than just two people who have been. <laughs> uh, let me get Cyrus. Okay, so Good the choice. chat gets Ayana and Tina. <laughs> That's not very nice. That's hilarious. They get no the mean one girls. One no yeah. one went to the big party. <laughs> Tina and Ayana after hearing that story. <laughs> Sorry, chat. Didn't mean to do Sorry, that to you. <laughs> All right. There we go. Good luck, chat. Good luck. The odds are in your favor. <laughs> okay. Um, anything else? Share anything else you want to? Discuss SP3 and I still have basketball and X Men to talk about. No, I'm good. Okay. Do you want to plug anything? Mm, no. All right. I need to get back to work probably. All right. <laughs> Next week we'll play some too hot to handle. 
Let me make sure I don't have anything next week. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, oh that'd boy. Be, that'd be good. Sorry, I have a very busy schedule. My social uh, life is booming. I know. Oh, man. I'll hear booming in these streets. <laughs> nope, I'm free. I will be here. Yeah, there we go. All right. All right. Bye, Share Delaware. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. Right, Bye. NBA playoffs. We're going to do. I want to go run in on uh, Beyond the Bell, Rich Rich and uh, Andrew's show, Zarian show. Oh, yeah. yeah. And we're just going to talk X-Men. But they, I'm going to let them do their, do you know, their, their actual show. <laughs> I'm going to let them do their actual show for a little while. But we're going we're gonna to do a run-in and talk All X-Men right. with them. Because I know they're both big X-Men fans. Oh, so, nice, nice. That's yeah, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I know they watch. So it's perfect. not like... I'm, we're doing this to like completely throw off their show. It, it's topical for them. Exactly. Anyway. So we're going to do a simulcast with them. That's and awesome. <laughs> First, we're going to talk basketball. Okay. Play in. We talked a little bit about the Lakers and the Pelicans, the Kings and the Warriors. I think, I think the Lakers win tonight. I don't think they're dumb enough to try to throw it or anything like that. It's tough for me to go against the Warriors in a one-game scenario, especially when the Kings don't have the depth without Herder and Monk. I Kings guess have not I'll... been playing well. Like that's how they got into this position. They yeah, were in they sixth place like two weeks ago. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go with the Kings. I mean, I'll go with the the Warriors. I don't feel great about it, but yeah, I get. It's tough for me to go against Steph. It really is. I don't even. I don't think the Warriors are that great, but it's tough for me to go against Steph. Uh, uh, and definitely for anyone who's going to be uh, watching that game, I would take the over. Take yeah, the over yeah. On, the, on the total points because it's going to be a lot of offense in that one. But it's it's crazy because you know that everybody made a big deal when Saul was, was talking about that playoff series that these two teams had. And now we get one year later, they're in the play in one game, one game takes it up. And that's what it came down to last season. Game seven, one game decided it all. Now it comes down to it for who's going to go to the playoffs or who's going to have a chance to go to the playoffs. Over in the East, the play in, we'll, we'll get the play ins out of the way. And then we'll yeah, this talk. Is, this is easy for, for me matchups. in the East. You think? Oh, well, I mean, look, the the Sixers and the Heat are in the play-in. They're, I assume they're, they're going to win. They're yeah. both going to win. But who's going to win that game? Sixers. If you think be, Sixers win? If Embiid's playing, their winners are eight straight. They just seem like they're playing their best basketball now that Embiid's back right now. And they're like, I, we said this what two, three weeks ago. We said if Embiid comes back and they're at that bottom half of the of the East, that whoever's up top and not named the Celtics should be scared of the Sixers. I'm honestly taking the Sixers to win against the Heat, and then I'm taking Sixers in seven against the Knicks. I'm not mad at that. Like the Sixers have been great with, they would have been a two seed if yeah. Embiid stayed healthy. They would have been the two seed. Um, he he definitely looks like he's back to his usual form. I know he missed the last couple of games. I think that was more precautionary. Yeah. Miami. I think Miami beats Chicago or Atlanta. And I don't think they want to face Boston in the first round. I think, I think people are looking at the Knicks and thinking that's a potential upset as a two seed because Randall being hurt is puts them at a disadvantage size wise. Uh, Brunson's playing great, and an OB is, is back, which is good for them. I like they're they have some depth players who I really like, but no Julius Randall definitely hurts them. I don't, I'm not fully sold on the Sixers beating Miami in a one game scenario, though. I'm not. I think Miami could can upset that. I guess it's an upset. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it's I, I, I could definitely see the the Heat winning. I just I just feel more confident as well if the Heat are the team that faces the Boston in the first round. I think that's going to be a true test to see if Boston is championship ready if they face the Heat in the first. Well, round. If they get the Sixers in the first round, that's yeah, gonna be either or, yeah, either like, or one of one of those teams. That's a tough matchup for one two for the Knicks or the or the Celtics. Like honestly. It's an you know Boston did all this work to be the best team in the league by by a wide margin. 
too. Yeah. Certainly in the East, they were 14 games better than the second best team in the East. And their first round opponent could be a healthy Sixers team, which the only reason they're in this spot is because Embiid missed so much time. Or a Miami team that is giving them fits over the last three years in the yeah. playoffs. Like not exactly the greatest break for them as as the one seed. But like if you're Boston and you are good as you actually were, you gotta beat at least Miami. The Sixers are a little bit of a wild card because the the Embiid health is what messed with I them. Think, I think if Miami you're, if you're, is who they are. If you're Boston, you want Miami. Because that will be like that's that's you immediately kind of showing that you can that you're better than last year against the team that beat you to go to the NBA finals. And you you need to kind of get that playoff energy immediately. We're used to the, the number one seed in the East facing an Atlanta or a Bulls, where it's kind of a wash. The last two seasons with Miami in that A spot, it's actually a, a competitive series. I think if you're Boston, you probably would prefer Miami as well, just to erase any kind of doubts there. Yeah, because the Sixers are going to be they're going to be trouble. I, I, the Sixers, it's going to break for them. I mean, the Bucks, like no one, none of those top three seeds have a have an easy road in the first round. The Bucks are facing the Kryptonite this season. In the Indiana Pacers. The Bucks are, aren't going to have Giannis to start the se- series either. He's out at least game one. He might be out more than that. I haven't seen the full update, but he's, he's definitely out. Oh, here we go. The Milwaukee Bucks. This is from Woj. Uh, the Milwaukee Bucks are preparing to be without Giannis for the start of the opening round, but hopeful uh, treatment on his left calf strain will allow him to return sometime later in the series. So I don't know what that means. I guess That's that at rough. least means game one and two, I would imagine. Yeah. So, that's a uh, and, and that was a crucial that's a crucial element of why they lost last season in the first round was Giannis's health. They the Dame's got to be a lot better yeah. if they have any shot at really winning this series i think i think if buck if bucks don't make it out the first round doc rivers definitely getting fired well i mean that's that should have been a given anyway but yeah i mean it should be a given even if they if they don't make it to the to the west to the eastern conference finals he should be fired honestly that's what i feel but i think definitely if they if they get bounced by pacers in the first round he's getting clipped the Pacers have been up and down. They, they ended the season really well, but Halliburton's injury kind of made them up and down a little bit. Um, and then Siakam came in and just kind of changed how they play. Not, and not they still, the Bucks still haven't played them with Siakam. Yeah, yeah. No Giannis it makes me really lean towards the Pacers because even with Giannis, that team's not great. Yeah, but no Giannis like. If Dame is going to be Dame, fine. I don't know if he's there right now. Like, he certainly hasn't been lately. Their defense is still bad. You take Giannis out. I think the Bucks might win this, or the Pacers might win this series. Yo, we might see, like, the most upsets in the first round. Like, either conference. And it's crazy. It's crazy because what two, three weeks ago we were like looking at the play-in for the Eastern Conference, like ah, nothing's going on here. But like now with the pace, with the Sixers and Miami potentially to come out of the play-in, it's not looking like an easy road for the Boston, uh, New York, or Milwaukee. I, yeah. Milwaukee, no Giannis. I think the Pacers are going to win that. The Knicks against the Sixers are the Heat. I want to see obviously who it is first. I think the no Sixers, Randall. I'll take I'll take either the Miami or Philly. If, if I'll Randall's take not playing the series. Well, Randall's definitely not playing the series. I think the Sixers beat the Knicks. Miami. I always am going to doubt Miami because they're they're just so like there in the regular season and then all of a sudden jimmy butler just decides to turn into michael jordan and i just can't explain it can't wait um, for the switch the switch we about to see the yeah. old the miami heat this is what they this is what they've done what now what has it been it's like four or five seasons like that's what they do they very nonchalant in the regular season 
and then they turn it on in the postseason. Yeah, I I keep saying like I don't know how often they can do it, but they've done it literally the past three seasons. So uh, clearly they can keep doing it. I think if the Knicks get Miami, the Knicks can win that. Yeah. Definitely, I agree with you. Knicks have a better chance of being Miami than the Sixers in a seven-game series. The NBA TV series, the Cavs, and the Magic. <laughs> Louis, Louis in chat. <laughs> what? The NBA TV series, because that ain't, it is that ain't getting no national coverage. No, all these games are going to be on NBA TV. <laughs> I don't know if that's official, by the way. But, I, but, but, no, it's, it's like you won't even get an argument for me because yes, yeah, it, that, all these games are going to be on NBA TV. That's what that reads like when the star when the star player is Donovan Mitchell and Pablo Banchero. Yeah, it's probably going to be on MT, NBA TV most most of the time, especially the weekday games. Louis Louis's been in on the Magic all year, and look, yes. they're the fifth seed. I think they beat Cleveland. And I'm higher, like I think I'm higher on Cleveland than most. The the reason why I'm sort of down on Cleveland, it's a vibe check. Honestly, the vibes on Cleveland ain't great. With the Mitchell, like, is he gonna stay? Is he gonna go? Losing that game to Charlotte, which I know they didn't have too much incentive to win, but you put themselves, you put yourself on the Boston side of the bracket i i think i think orlando maybe orlando's too young maybe that ends up biting them but i like the makeup of orlando's team and defensively i think they, they're gonna give the Cavs a lot of fits so i actually think orlando's gonna win this series I've been a fan of the Cavs for since they made the move to get Donovan Mitchell, you know, having Mobley and the, the the bigs that they have. I think they're they can be a very good team. I think that the thing that's missing now is the coaching. I think they gotta make a coaching change. And I do agree with you that there is a chance that Magic will win this one. For now, I'll take the Cavs in seven, but I took the Cavs in seven last year against the Knicks and they lost. So I'm not going to be doubting the fact that I could be wrong again. The West. So we have the Thunder against, we don't know yet. I'm going to say Warriors. I think Warriors okay. beat Kings and Pelicans. Okay. I'm not. The Pelicans always lose in these big games. And so like that makes me like, yeah, maybe. The Kings... It's it is tough for me to like doubt Steph Clay like they they close the season very strong as well like I'm I'm fine if we get the Warriors I I'm gonna regret it because Draymond's annoying even Steph like when playing against him super annoying I I maintain my position in that we're the one seed we got home court. We're facing a team that's going to have to play two games this week while we're rested. I think no matter who who it is, any of these four teams, I think we should win this series. Doesn't mean we will, and then we'll be called frauds. I'll call them frauds. But I think they should win this series just based on the the advantages here. Like Maybe they're too young. Maybe it's just... It's going to be an issue, but we've got a top five MVP candidate, even more than top five, top three, probably. We've got a top three MVP candidate. Overall, a good team with a good defense and a good offense. Like, I, I think we should beat whoever comes as the A seed, whoever it might be. We'll see. I am, I am very worried about the Lakers matchup. By the way, look, I do not want out of all the teams, I don't want the Lakers because Davis is an issue and LeBron, like the physicality and getting into the paint is also a, a huge issue. So that's the team I'm most worried about. The Pelicans kind of have similar advantages with Zion. Uh, the Kings, I don't think their depth, I, 
the, the injuries to Monk and Herder don't make me too afraid of them. And the the Warriors are just going to be annoying regardless, but overall their defense is uh, just kind of suspect. But I don't want the Lakers out of all these teams, so I just hope the Lakers win tonight and don't have to worry about it. Um, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, you know, the reason why I was talking about Lakers tanking this game is because we, there's two teams that I do feel confident, confident against in a play in or playoff situation. And it is the Pelicans, the one that we're playing tonight, but the other team is the Oklahoma city thunder. We have seemingly played them very well the entire season. And I think that that's the matchup that we would want the most out of the top half of the Western conference, but you can't play with these type of things. So I think that the Lakers will get the seven seed once again this season. And we'll probably lose to the Denver Nuggets in six. We'll win two games this year. Yeah, the you'll win two games. We'll win two games. Okay. I think most people want to avoid Denver, but look, if you want to win a title, you're going to probably have to beat Denver. Yeah. Denver's the best team in the West. So you're probably going to have to face them. You can make the argument of, oh, well, let's catch them later because maybe they're not as healthy. Well, maybe you're not as healthy. Exactly. We're older. We're older than them. So, yeah, we would be more affected by playing more. Yeah, Lakers and Denver. I, I think if the Lakers attempt to tank, which I don't think they will, by the way, I think it is a kind of a fan narrative i just can't imagine lebron being like hey guys let's go out there and get 50 percent for this game and and then make it a one game scenario you just can't play like that you can't play of like let's lose this game on purpose and then you lose the next game yeah and then if you lose the next game you're not in the playoffs at all yeah it's not worth it it doesn't seem worth it. It's again, it's a loser mentality. So I don't see it. And, and if we it, are not losers. We are 17 time champions. It's been a while. It's been four years. What that are you talking about? Uh, yes, it rant. does. Yes, it does. It counts. Counts all the rant. same. Counts all the same. We don't care about what it counts in the Jeremy Lambert ad. We care what it counts in the NBA lexicon. The Timberwolves and Suns. Uh, the Suns have kind of owned the Timberwolves in the I got, regular I got, season. I got the Suns in six. Really? Okay. I'm not mad at it. I I think that the Suns, it, it proved to be a tough matchup for the Timberwolves all regular season, including the final game of the season, where the Timberwolves had something to play for. So did the Suns. Both teams had something to play for. Maybe the Timberwolves less so, because they were at least guaranteed a top three spot. But if they won, they would have been... They would have necessarily been the one seed because if it was a three-way tie, OKC would have been the one seed. And that's what happened. Denver beat Memphis. OKC beat Dallas. Memphis and Dallas weren't trying in those games. So Minnesota didn't have like a ton of incentive, especially once you saw how the, the other games unfolded. But they still had some incentive to try to win in case Denver ended up losing that game. Um, Phoenix had incentive to stay to win to try to stay out of the play-in. And they did, and so they got Minnesota. Hey, we, we 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 looked at Phoenix's schedule. They had the toughest schedule out of everybody at the bottom half of the West, and they played extremely well down the stretch. Yeah, Minnesota. I mean, Phoenix has, has played great, and the the thing that I keep coming back to with Minnesota is yeah, their defense has been really good this season. I, I think it's been best in the league, maybe only behind Boston. Um, but it, it's been really good this season, but we've seen good regular season go bear defenses. And then we've seen them completely schemed out in the playoffs. And I think Minnesota's more better equipped to handle that than those Utah teams were. The problem is Phoenix is the like one team that can completely detonate that defense as far as just spreading them out. Like you get Booker, Beal, Durant. I'll throw Bull Bull out there as as the stretch five, and in well, let's say Grayson Allen, like that's or Royce O'Neal. Like I actually think Royce O'Neal it would be better than than Bull Bull. But even Nurkic can stretch the floor a little bit. 
And he's a rebounding like I what's that? He hits the boards like a beast for them too. Oh, he does. He does. But like that's somebody like he can he can stretch a little bit. Like Nurkic has a little bit of range, but well, what Nurkic not... does is he gets some second chance, second chance opportunities. But I'm saying like Nurkic is going to be in the paint. Like against uh against Gobert, you would think those those second chance opportunities aren't going to come quite as well. Sure. Um, like the the way to beat Gobert defenses that we've seen is spread them out, take Gobert out of the paint. And then if, as he rotates over, kick it out. And that's, you know, that's the, the easy way to do it. Nurkic is not the threat that maybe a bull bull, but certainly like a Royce O'Neal is going to be because Gobert can't punish any of these guys. No. Even though he's three feet taller than Royce O'Neal, he can't punish him offensively. So I just think Phoenix is not a great matchup for them like they're gonna need anthony edwards to be really good and they're gonna need towns who i know he's coming off the injury but they're really gonna need him to be good i think that i actually think the for minnesota going with nas reed over gobert for long stretches might be better for them hey man wrestle wrestlemania star nas reed like i'm yeah i'm all for um, I'm I'm all for it. I'm all for Nas where you get more time. I'm I'm slightly leaning towards Phoenix because I I think that's the worst possible matchup for Minnesota. I got Phoenix in six. Okay, got, and then uh, and Denver is in six. And if it's the Warriors versus the Thunder, I will take Thunder in five. I'm not picking five at all. Absolutely not. I can't. I can't do it. The um, toughest series, the one that I think is going seven in the West, is definitely the four or five matchup. That's the one that I'm most looking forward to. Clippers yeah. and Mavericks. I don't know the status of Kawhi. He missed the the final few games. Um, I don't know if he's going to be healthy for game one. That's obviously going to swing some things because. But Kawhi is the best player on the Clippers. I don't think that's yeah. stating too much out there. And he can he allows them to just do different things offensively and defensively. You can throw Kawhi on Kawhi on Kawhi on Kyrie or Luca, then you can put Paul George on the other one. So yeah. to help neutralize as best they can. He's also offensively their most efficient player. Look, the playoff history of George Harden and Russ is the playoff history of George Harden. And Russ, you don't. There's not a whole lot of there with those guys. Paul George had an outstanding season, by yeah. the way, but he had outstanding seasons in the past, and then the playoffs happened. So I'm leaning if Kawhi is playing game one and plays all series, I'm leaning towards the Clippers. If Kawhi misses time, I'm leaning towards the Mavericks. People forget that the Clippers actually have won both of these series. People think like the Mavericks actually won one of the series because Luca hit that game winner. And it's like, oh yeah, they Luca owns the Clippers. It's like, well, he's actually 0-2 against them in the playoffs. Different team now with Kyrie, but he hasn't beaten. People just think he's beaten them because he has the moment that sticks out. He doesn't actually have the series win. Um, It's going to depend on Kawhi's health. We'll see, you know, how where it goes. Though I, I'm leaning towards the Clippers if Kawhi's healthy. Dallas in seven. Okay. Got to stick with the family. My family's been playing well. Kyrie's been playing well. Luca's been playing great. Luca is my pick for MVP as well. Uh, he was my pick at the beginning of the season. No, a beginning of last season. But I think I, I said I said Jason Tatum this season. He's not going to win. Uh, the, the Really, the top four candidates, it seems like it's going to be Jokic, Giannis, uh, Shea, and Luka. And I'll take I'll take Luka. Luka or Shea out of that group. All right. We shall see. We shall see when it comes to just the first round. I'm glad the playoffs are finally here. It's nice that oh, Lewis is a Dallas sweep. 
I mean, a lot of people have been saying that. I've heard, I've actually heard that talk because of the the Kawhi injury that people are saying that he's like the glue. He's the he's the one that he knows is. how to win. He's the one that knows how to win in the playoffs. And without him, we're gonna see the the playoff P and playoff Harden and Russ being Russ. Like that's what people think. He is, but I just don't see a sweep. I mean, oh. That team's still good enough to win a game or two, I even feel, without yeah. Kawhi. They are. They, they that would be a playoff team even with without Kawhi, in my opinion. I mean, the again, the playoff history is a playoff history. I'm not ignoring that. I watched most of it. I lived through most of it. He was like, so, I synced it. I synced it I with have, my own eyes. I've I've seen what Russ has has done in the playoffs. I've seen what Paul George has done in the playoffs. I've seen James Harden in the playoffs. Like I know it. Yeah, firsthand as a as a Thunder fan with all these guys, but we shall see. I'm looking forward to that series. That's the series I'm most intrigued by. A lot of star power, a lot of and you know they they're on. If everybody feels the Thunder are a fraud one seed, okay, got a like, tough matchup in the next round. That's that's who they get in the the next round. Like they could get the Thunder or they could get whoever the eight seed is and then they'd have home court for that so the path to the conference finals for this team for the clippers the 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 mavericks like if they win this series they got to feel pretty good about their path to the conference finals yeah they don't any of the one of the teams have to face the nuggets until the conference finals so that works out well for them all right let's uh let me let me pop on zarian stream right fast go ahead let me see if he are they done Oh my God! They're done already. Oh no! It says scheduled, but it doesn't oh, say. Oh, they didn't live. start yet. They didn't start yet. Maybe. Oh, I think I don't think I don't know if they go through Streamyard. Hold on. Nah, see, they pulled the okie doke on you. Yeah, they don't go through Streamyard. They go through something else. Uh, well, never mind. I can't just like pop on here and just ruin things. <laughs> he was like, "Damn it! I was really looking forward to ruining things." <laughs> Yeah, that's unfortunate. All they right, ruin, they ruin, they ruin the best laid plans. These sons of damn yeah. it. That's unfortunate. Oh, well. All right. Well, we'll just talk about X-Men 97 here now. Yeah, they're definitely on something new. I see the way the comments are even coming up. It looks weird. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. What can you do? All right. Anyway, X-Men 97. SV3. All right, go ahead. I've amazingly again watched every episode on this series, which is not typically like me. I'm gonna get behind now that the playoffs are starting, by the way. So just <laughs> word of warning. That's why you gotta watch it in the morning. You gotta watch nah, it first. I'm immediately thing working in the morning. In the morning. I'm immediately working in the morning. I just I just uh, I'll, I'll do like uh, I'll do some work in the morning and then pop it on. Uh, pop it on I've, I've, I've watched i watched each episode at least twice because we did we've been doing reviews over on true hill heat sports and entertainment so i'm not gonna go through episode by episode what i will say i'm just gonna kind of give a general comments about things um i'm i'm not like I didn't read a lot of the comic books. I watched the series as a kid. It was like one of my favorite series to watch. Same. I watched the, the watched it all the time. I always loved Gambit as a kid. I was talking to you about it in the the DMs because I always liked Gambit. <laughs> I think one of the weird reasons was like all the other X Men. You know, like you can't have uh, spikes coming out of your hands. I can't shoot lasers and stuff. I could take a deck of cards and throw it at people. <laughs> Like so you, you were like, you know, you were like that's that's a mutant that I can relate to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, uh, me personally, I I uh, like, I had like different views of the animated series. Like my memories of the animated series was like I was a big fan of of Wolverine. I remember Cyclops was a lot better in the animated series than any yeah. of the other adaptations yeah. that I saw. And I remember Rogue was a lot more interesting than the movies. But then I rewatched it before X Men '97, uh, you know, uh, started started airing in March. I rewatched the whole entire animated series, and I was like, 
blown away by all the stories that they touched on, whether it was like Days of Future Past or uh, the Phoenix Saga. That was like nine episodes of the Phoenix Saga in the animated series. And it got it so much better than either one of those trash movies. So like I was rewatching all of this and I was very much enjoying it. And then overall, my main thought as far as like Gambit was, I was like, man, Whenever you talk about X-Men, everybody always talks about either the relationship of Gene and Scott or the love triangle of Gene, Scott, and Logan. But Rogue and Gambit is so much better as a couple. Yeah. They are the best couple in X-Men because they are basically the mutant version of Romeo and Juliet. It's a tragic love story. Yeah. Like the, the stories were so much better in the animated series. Like the movies, like they got to truncate everything to fit it into two hours, two and a half but the hours. And mo the movies did character assassination to Cyclops, Rogue, and Storm. Because just watching five episodes of X Men '97, those three characters are so much better and have so much more depth than we ever saw in any of the Fox films. Oh, 100%. 100%. And so watching this series, I had to like kind of recall of what happened in the the original series. And then I, I just I, I should have probably rewatched stuff. But instead, I just kind of looked at a quick recap of everything. But Screen yeah. Crush or a new rock star? <laughs> Both of those do. I, I would no. I'm suggesting it for people who who don't oh. uh, who haven't watched the anime series. They they want a quick like recap. The best two videos I saw were Screen Crush and New Rockstar. They did episode by episode breakdowns of animated series. They told you like top top ten episodes to watch or top ten sagas to watch in the animated series. They did a really good episode. And us True Hill Heat, we did uh, everything you need to know before X Men ninety seven video as well. Let's see, I read a bunch of stuff. I didn't watch videos. I just, I just read some online recaps. Um, but you know, going into this, like I saw kind of the hype around that. I was like, all right, I'm gonna since I love this original series as a kid, I'm gonna watch this. And man, some of the like, maybe it's just because I'm so used to the the movies, and that's like my uh, what's the what's the word I'm looking for? Your my memories of that not aspect. vision, maybe memories uh maybe maybe that's the right word i don't i don't feel like it is but my it's not vision but my thought of like what x-men is is like the movies and everything and then you watch something like this and like the it feels like they just take so many chances uh on just the stuff that they do like sinister minister uh being like all it's so trippy with that kind of stuff of like oh shit he's like attacking their thoughts and like rearranging the house and you know making it into you got the two gene grays it's like wait a second what's the real one who's the fake one now scott loves her and uh, but the memories are of her and it's like it feels like they take so many chances that aren't there in the movies and I, I haven't, I've only watched like the movies like once and they usually I'd watch them like when they come out and it's been forever since I've seen this stuff, but it feels like the movies are very dumbed down for a lot of, and I understand that you're trying to do more mass appeal than, than everything, but like the, the storm episode, especially like when she loses her powers and then goes off into the, the old town road uh, and, and everything <laughs> and, you know, gets attacked uh and she has to be protected by by the guy like you know it's just in the chances that they kind of take on this stuff it feels very different certainly from the movies like if you're if reference point maybe that's what i'm thinking of like reference if the movies are like your only reference point of x-men this is so out of left field compared yeah. to the movies 100% agree with you there and this is like the, the the this show is very much like a main argument that I've been saying for a while is that I prefer TV shows over movies because you get a lot more time to flesh out characters you, you give a whole character one episode 
where we learn so much about them. And that's what they did in the animated series. Like I remember, like I was rewatching the animated series and I remember like when they did a Wolverine episode, I would always be like, okay, this is a Wolverine episode. It's going to be Wolverine versus Sabretooth or Wolverine with a former love of his life that got killed or something like that. Cause that was happening to all of his love of his life is they always get killed or taken away from him. I was like, I like that stuff. And that's what made my bond with Wolverine. But I think that because Wolverine was the most popular from the animated series, was the most popular from the comic books, they made that the whole thing with the movies. Like, literally, yeah. we're at, what, what, 10 years ago, in the early 2010s, X-Men and Fox were making two sets of movies. Wolverine movies and X-Men movies. Literally, he got so big that they started doing just Wolverine movies because they made him... Because how they did that first film, the first X-Men film, which is still one of the best superhero films, is that they let Rogue kind of be the initial kind of character point to introduce us to the X-Men. Like, we're seeing the X-Men through her eyes, or we're meeting Wolverine through her eyes. But once they get together, and then they get attacked by the the Brotherhood of Mutants, it turns into, now it's Wolverine is the main character that we're seeing the X-Men through his eyes. And then he never stopped being the main character. X2, it's all about his backstory. X3, it's it's supposed to be about the Cure and In Inferno, uh, I mean, I mean um, the Phoenix, but then it turns into Wolverine's the main character and he has to kill Gene at the end because that's what they did with all the movies. They focused so much on Wolverine. And then the next era when they did like first class, they focused so much on Magneto. They kept putting Magneto into the X-Men movies even when he wasn't needed because and Magneto, Professor X, and, and Wolverine are the three most popular characters that if you just know of X-Men by those three characters because you only watch the movies, I wouldn't be surprised if you don't know any of the other X-Men and that they're all very cool in their unique ways. And that's the main thing like to focus on one episode. The first episode immediately was just like, okay, this is much different. This is immediately putting this on edge because the first X-Men we see is Storm. Why? Storm is the strongest, but we never knew that if you watch the movie. Storm is the strongest of the X-Men team. She's the only Omega level mutant on the X-Men team. So to have her be the first introduction and just the voice actor is just so amazing when she's, heed my command. I'm like, I will listen to you read a grocery list <laughs> oh my god it's just so powerful and then to see bishop there and i'm like oh bishop here why we still don't know why bishop is here because i, I very much I, that's what i've been asking since episode one i was like bishop i know you're not from here you're <laughs> from the future you're from closer to where we are right now than 97 so like why are you in 1997, Bishop? And then to see the the Cyclops, Cyclops, how they how they put it and presented Cyclops in that first episode immediately put any questions that I had about the series because Cyclops was the most the most character assassination that anyone did in those Fox movies. Yeah, first... Cyclops, Cyclops in the movies is like almost non-existent. I'm like okay, and. And my reference point was always as as watching the um watching the show as a kid. It was like, oh, Cyclops is one of the main dudes over here. And then you watch the movies, it's like, nah, Cyclops is just kind of there. He's along for the ride. And that that was kind of almost turned me off to the movies. And then they never made a Cyclops movie. Like maybe for maybe they did. No, nobody watched it. They re they, they recasted um I forget what's the actor's name, but they recasted him for uh, Apocalypse and. Uh, Dark Phoenix, but both of those, both of those are among the worst X Men movies. Uh, but yeah, Cyclops. When I when I saw him in the animated series, and of course, like the big fight scene uh, right off the the jump there, like, I was like, oh yeah, We're this using is using the blast to fly yeah. through the room. That shit was. Dope. I'm like, this is this is the Cyclops that I grew up on right here. This is what I'm talking about right here. So yeah, Cyclops was uh, uh fantastic in the in the animated series, and this whole story with Gene and two genes and everything um like, like all of the stories are really really good i and i called it from jump because like when we when we saw in the uh preview that there was a pregnant jean gray immediately because i did read the comic books i was like that's not gene but my whole question and we still haven't got the answer 
is when was they swap? When was Gene, when was Madeline Pryor swapped for Gene Gray? Because that would go back into the animated series. Because in the comics, Sinister makes the switch when she gets abducted by the Phoenix Force. So there's like the first five episodes that is the Phoenix Saga in season three. But then there's a period of time that Gene's gone into the sun, they think. And Scott is like depressed. He leaves the team. He goes back to his old orphanage. And then he's told when he comes back to the team that they found Gene, that she's come up from the bottom of the ocean and she's appeared. But in the comics, that Gene was always like, there's a gene that replaces uh, Gene when she's gone, and that's Madeline Pryor. But he meets Madeline Pryor as a different person, but they all think that she's Gene unborn, like reborn, and he falls in love with her. They have a kid, they get married, all that stuff. And then Gene, you know, comes from the bottom of the of the ocean and reappears. And then Scott says, Oh, sorry, Madeline. I know we got a kid. We know we got married, but I'm gonna go with the real Gene now. And that's basically what we're seeing on the show, which is great. They're doing a little bit because he's like, well, I have a kid with her. Um, and, you know, he's communicating with Jean, who is off in another. Uh, I forget the name. Of it's the a world. love. It's like a love rectangle because you got yeah. Logan over there. Yeah, Logan's the thing, there. Yeah. The only thing they want to do with Logan is him and uh, Jean at this point. That's the one thing. My one nitpick of the series so far is that they have made Wolverine a back a background character. Yeah, you were you were talking about Wolverine and how like the. Uh, the movie franchise, he was the central figure of that. They made multiple movies. You know, Logan, that, that movie is one of the, the best X-Men. It's the best. Yeah. I, I, it's the best for me. Well, it's it's that X2 and Days of Future Past is my top three. But in the animated series, like, he ain't doing shit so far. He shows up for maybe a battle. Otherwise, he's just like, he's playing basketball and is like, all right, I'm fucking out of here. Like, he ain't doing nothing. Uh, so far in the animated series i imagine his time will come because they've had a lot of like different standalone episodes you know, like the storm episode uh the jubilee episode which was like really fun that was and, fun and yeah the Motendo and seeing mojo back that was a lot of fun and just seeing yeah. jubilee upgrade her powers with her meeting the older jubilee that was just a great moment that was a much needed moment because i was like jubilee was another character where i was like oh she's not getting the shine she's supposed to be a part of the team but they keep leaving her behind and it's like come on put her a part of the team so i like that episode and then the the latest episode where gambit sorry if this spoils anybody like go watch it the new episode's out tomorrow, so you've had a week. Um, Gambit basically sacrifices himself, and but like these that, signals are attacking. That episode is a ten out of ten. Yeah, it's so good. Of, like because there's so much going on. Like when we did our review on True Hill Heat, I literally had to break it down. Of there's stuff that happens in Genosha, and there's stuff that happens with the X Men team getting interviewed at the X Mansion, and like there's so much to talk about. From both things, from what happened in Genosha to what happened with Scott's interview with this whole villain, his old villain arc monologue that he did about how the, the humans don't appreciate them. Yeah, humans and, then, ain't shit. and then him mind fucking Madeline Pryor. He was up. Why? Like, what is going on? Because I immediately know. You know how you know what is Madeline Pryor? You know how, right? Well, she's in Genosha. You know no, but you know how the easiest way to tell the difference between Madeline Pryor oh, and Jean what, Grey? What's that? Ponytail, hair down. Oh, okay. That, that's there. That's what they're doing. They're doing that in every scene. That's how you will know. It's the hair. It's always the hair. Jean is always going to have her hair up in a ponytail. Madeline's going to have her hair down. So as soon as Madeline, they pan the camera over to Madeline, to uh, the, to what we thought was Jean, I'm like, that's Madeline. And I knew Cyclops knew that that was Madeline because of the hair at this point. And because she's talking about their, their son and like, oh, tell me about him. Oh, his brown eyes. And then they start making out and then Gene pops up. I was like, and then the whole conversation in front of the camera, like, how long has this been going on? <sighs> it's, been, it's been only happening for about a month. You know, I checked on her when she went away. I got a kid with her. Jean's over here kissing Logan. I know. Which, which she ain't no saint either on this. So, and you know, then you got, everything you got going on, Genosha. Flirting, flirting with the with the reporter. 
because that's yeah. his girlfriend in the comic books actually spoiler alert for y'all that's his girlfriend mm -hmm. in comic books that's why he's flirting with her uh and then yeah the genosha stuff was just like everything from them offering um magneto to be king every scene was just like home run home run home run the, the scene with magneto and rogue with him telling her to be the queen and that she could be the leader you could be an empathetic leader the rogue and gambit conversation is the most adult conversation that has ever been on an animated series like that was like no that is like five six seasons of of sexual tension actually being talked about in a adult manner and like i love gambit being like you told me you didn't want to make it official and i understood but like now you're coming at me saying you're the queen and then a rose hole break whole breakdown of how she met Magneto. And I'm like, man, man, th that that man had full on gray hair Groomed. and you Groomed. were introduced by your mother, ma'am. I'm, I'm just saying. The... What, what was he wearing when they're having dinner? This man's in a bathrobe. What is going on? His nipples is always out. Dude, the scenes, not not this episode, but the, the scenes with the Sinister Minister episode, where Mr. he's... Sinister. What? Mr. Sinister. Yeah, okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> I, you're, thinking, you're thinking of James Mitchell. <laughs> I am, I am. <laughs> but where he's mind-fucking Gambit by showing him the, the, the images of Rogue and Magneto, I'm like, jeez, this is cruel right then, here. And then I, we, we, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because this is a part that not a lot of people have been talking about was that we got, we finally got confirmation that um, Morphe's in love with Wolverine in that episode. Yeah. Because what? Yeah. How did how did Minister mess with him? Is he pretended Wolverine was taking a shower? Yep. So Morph came in like, you want me to get to those hard to reach places? And what did he say? He was like, we oh, you think that we don't know? We all know. We all know more. He's really in love. So it's a love. What is it? A love hexagon. It's just, it's like Charlie Day. Like everybody's going this way. Like that's, that's all it is, man. Yeah. The, again, some of these, it's one of those shows where like I watch it, I've watched all the episodes and I keep seeing people because I'm always behind on watching it. And I keep seeing people, they like you, Phil, Zarian, and everyone's just like, this episode was the best episode. This episode, like after every new episode, it's like this is the new best episode. I'm like, can they really top what they've done the previous episode? And every single hard. time, like they do. It's gonna be hard after this week because this it week is. was my first it ten is. out of ten. Uh, remember, it was my first ten out of ten because, like, like I said, that rogue Magneto conversation, then everything that happened at the gala with the little dance sequence <laughs> with Magneto and and Rogue, and then how everything came together after that with Madeline and Jean getting that vision at the same yeah. time, and then the music. Did you peep the music that was playing? It's the same music from the vision she had in episode one. Oh, from okay. When she looked into Guy Rich's mind and she got the vision of the Sentinel thing, the same mm. music was playing when Cable comes up and he's like, stop the music, stop the music. He's coming. He's coming. It's the same music. And then in that vision, there was like a little tornado. Remember when she picks up the baby in the vision and there's like a little tornado telling him, telling her, sorry, I'm sorry. That's Cable. That's Cable because that's what Cable says to her when he sees her on the balcony. He says, I'm sorry, mom. That was her. Yeah. That was basically her having a vision of what was going to happen in Genosha. And then she says, I'm sorry. And then they get nuked by this Godzilla sentinel, uh, basically a whole big genocide. And how they shot all of this was amazing. Like there was small parts that I didn't even talk about on our review, like Magneto getting visions of the freaking Holocaust. In the middle, in the middle, and then he just like rages up, takes a whole train, and that was lost his little shit. Yeah. Like, Magneto, Magneto has been like my like the person that I've appreciated more in this series is Magneto. The trial of Magneto, and then that scene, I was like, yo, this dude is insane. Because in episode two, I legitimately thought that this was all a ploy by Magneto. But after this past episode, remember it? I'm like, yeah, I don't think Magneto going to do all that. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a ways to, to go with everything. I 
it did seem like it could be a ploy at first because yeah they go to arrest him he's like okay how am i gonna prove myself all right go mm-hmm. to the court and everything once you know storm got shot instead of him and then he like could have really just fucked everything up with that that uh assassin guy and instead he basically like let him live off of that i was like all right if he 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 felt something if it was a ploy he certainly reversed course on here and now you know he's uh he's going to the direction that they're going with him i'm real i'm looking forward to the new episode tomorrow uh i'll watch it at some point but like if you're not watching it uh i suggest people i suggest you do watch it if you're just even like i'm not a huge x-men fan i don't read the comics i i watched the animated series as a kid um and i i've watched most of the movies but typically only once uh but i i just think like this is just good storytelling and and good s- cinema uh just just good television you know you, i don't feel like you have to be an x-men fan to appreciate and understand that this is just good overall television yes um one thing that are theories that i have i'll just um, just name some of my theories that i have out here um the dr cooper uh that's a part of the government definitely mystique that's definitely mystique. Okay. that's that because um i got the i said this after like episode one on our review and then this week we got confirmation it's the scene when they're at the gala when Cooper X's um, the Hellfire Club, why they would get, you know, a terrorist to be in charge of uh, Genosha. And then Magneto has the slick comeback line where he's like, and, but so many of your leaders wind up being terrorists. And uh, she, uh, but then the Hellfire Club told uh, Cooper that, oh, um, but he got Rogue to lead with them. And she's like, Rogue? Um, what did she say? Why would Cooper care about Rogue unless she is Mystique? The mother of Rogue. Okay. I, and, I mean, now that you've sold me on that. And then my other theory is that it's either Sinister or three, one of three people. It's either Sinister, Apocalypse, or Bastion. Bastion is one that's not really known, that hasn't been introduced in the animated series at all. But Apocalypse was kind of last seen. He just abducted the body of somebody at the end of se- in season five. And then, uh, you know, Sinister has already been involved in this season, and he seems like he's going to be one of the big bads of the season. So I think one of those three is the one that sent the Sentinel to Genosha. Okay. We shall see how it all plays out. Anything else, buddy? That is all this week. That is all. All right. We will be back next week, everybody. More. We'll have the playoffs to talk about. Plenty about that. I don't know. Anything you want to plug? Uh, check out our wrestling YouTube channel, True Heel Heat. I will be live with Romeo, 2.05 p.m. Eastern Time, to review Monday Night Raw. Talking about Rhea Ripley's injury, Chad Gable turning heel. So join us for that. All right. Uh, and it says no DC talk shells. Sorry. Tell them to release the hey, animated series. I've been re-watching Batman the Animated Series. So okay. All we right. could do that um sp3 and i'll be back tomorrow talking wrestling on in the weeds at 10 a.m eastern so everybody can join us for that thursday is actually oh that's spotlight but nothing on uh overbooked for thursday i don't think unless it's an upload of something um what what i think we're actually gonna do thursday taylor swift album comes out thursday midnight look at this guy i'm not beating those white allegations taylor swift album <laughs> yeah, after, after i'm speaking put your whiteness in question you yeah. say that we're gonna i think we're gonna do another midnight stream like we did last time i got a lot of views last time like uh so i'll let everybody know but count on that and then friday in the weeds again 10 a.m eastern it'll be sp3 and i once again so that is that we'll be back next week to uh, talk more basketball talk x-men talk challenge maybe play two out to handle mobile since we won't have multiple episodes of stuff to catch up on until then goodbye everyone <laughs>